Okay, so basically, Auckland recognised the fact that yes, there was there's potential for harm, and the program was devised, I suppose you could say, uh, back in 2002, very early on, and essentially they chose Adelaide as the pilot program. So being a responsible host, all, stat all Adelaide staff receive training in identifying the signs and symptoms of problem gambling. That's an induction, so within the first three months of their employment, they all go through that. And by understanding these issues and signs and symptoms, they can in turn help us, the host responsibility coordinators. Also through the, uh, the host responsibility policy when it was first developed, um, is the gambling continuum. And I'll go cover this a little bit later, but essentially when we talk about gambling, that's where we want to keep people at the safe end of the gambling continuum. Okay, all staff receive basic training on some of the signs and indicators of responsible gambling. So the most important part, getting to the host responsibility program itself, uh, commenced in December 2004, uh, where I left surveillance. So December 2004, there was four of us. I came from security surveillance. We had another one from security, a person from food and beverage, and another person from gaming machines. It just so happened that was a good spread of staff and giving a good uh, basis for the department to be commenced. We, had, we did a week's worth of training. We had United Care Wesley attend, uh, Christine Nankara and Mark Henley talk about um, the overview uh, of the social impact of gambling, general counselling information, role plays and motivational interviewing. That gave us a good grounding, a good basis. Current training, so we've gone through the gambling, alcohol and drug issues. We've talked about disability awareness. We've had that training. Um, assist the applied suicide intervention training. That was very important for the team. Cultural awareness workshops and internal and departmental training. So the host responsibility coordinators. It's not about waiting for visual signs or indicators that suggest problem gambling. In fact, Paul Del Fabro's name was mentioned previously by Mark. And I believe there's something odd to 50 odd indicators that suggest a customer's got a problem. Well, again, we don't wait for that. Our role is the customer service approach. That's the easiest way to put it. Going there and speaking to customers and trying to elicit as much information as possible. So essentially, you know, our aim is to manage harm in a targeted way. As been discussed and mentioned a couple of times this morning, it's, it's an acceptable adult entertainment. But there are those people in the community who do suffer. We had a lady came, uh, reported to us through valet. She was a very eager, thumping the desk, saying, I need to get the car back. My husband won't be happy. She disappeared. About two weeks later, she came back. We made contact with her. Through that intervention, through valet, identifying the fact that she wasn't happy and she needed the car back eagerly, we made contact and realised that essentially her, li her life was in complete turmoil. She was having problems with her husband, her family, the husband's side of the family, and so she was using gambling to escape her worries. Well, those, the signs and indicators, for example, from Paul de Fabre, I mean, let's say, for example, one of them was gambling for more than three hours in a row. There's, there's an indicator. But remember, we're not looking for one. We're looking for a, a, probably two or three or four indicators that would suggest there's a concern. But as I said, we don't wait for those signs or indicators to, to show. Certainly, we do get calls from gaming staff, table game staff and gaming machine staff about the person who's at the table and he's angry and he's thumping the table. I mean, gambling's about, supposed to be about entertainment. But we know it doesn't always go that way for a lot of people. So, yes, there are signs and indicators, quite obvious. They're hitting the machine. They're not happy. They're back and forth to the ATMs. So there's all those signs and indicators, uh, for example, by, again, by Paul Del Fabro, are there. They can be seen. And those ones that can't be, that's where, again, it's easy for us to approach and talk to the customer, that customer service approach and build a rapport. Essentially, just wrapping up to say that the program is very important in that it's all about customer service approach, investigating, speaking to customers, trying to find out as much information as we can from them in that early stages to try and stave off customers um, developing a problem. Thank you.